So what do you think? Am I an engineer? Or am I a footwear designer? Can I be both? As a little girl, I was very passionate about shoes. I spent hours underneath tables just to look at people's shoes. And my dream job was to sell shoes. So I used to build a little shoe shop in the garden trying to sell old shoes. Unfortunately, they didn't teach shoes in school. So I got more and more interested in science and mathematics. The 12-year-old me was playing around with static electricity and chemically growing gemstones in the freezer to much joy of my parents. So at the age of 18, I decided to take that route and I started studying engineering. Five years later, I graduated as an engineer with a specialization in nanoscience and nanotechnology. But I also realized that everyone who knew me, including my parents, had been right from the start. I could study engineering if I worked hard, but the job, an engineer? Maybe that's not entirely me. And they were right, it was only a small part of me. At that time, I already started PhD research in nanotechnology at the University of Leuven, and I decided to pick up that old passion for shoes again. So I started studying fashion footwear design as a hobby, but my background in engineering was never far away. I used it at first for the very obvious things, like calculating heel constructions, or using it as an inspiration. For my PhD research, I worked a lot with microscopes, and to me, those images, like this one, um, were not just scientifically relevant, they also had something beautiful, magical about them. They were elegant. So I decided to use them as an inspiration for the silhouettes of my designs. Now, my research was not just making pretty microscopy images. The purpose was to find out how these structures look at the nanoscale, since I was researching nanotechnology. And finding out how they look, there is a very geometrical structure there. So I decided to combine these both opposites in designs inspired by nanotechnology, to make it a little more tangible for a wider audience. Because nanotechnology is something a little obscure. You can't see it, you can't feel it. Things look different at that scale, they act different at that scale. But then I started thinking, why would I stop here? I could use nanotechnology as an inspiration, but isn't it more interesting to use it as such in my shoes? Because it's perfect for fashion. You don't see it, so it won't affect the looks, something that is important in fashion, but I can change the functionalities of a material with it. I could make my shoes more wear-resistant, more comfortable and durable. So it's now about eight months ago, I decided to take a big step and do exactly that, integrate nanotechnology in shoes. I started my own company, it's called Elaniano, and it's literally a combination of elegance and nanotechnology, the name. And I integrate in elegant, fashionable shoes, nanotechnology, to enhance their quality. How can that work? What, is, what can you do with nanotechnology in shoes? Well, the first problem that I tackled is one of my own luxury problems. I have a lot of shoes, and Unfortunately, the amount of time that I wear a pair of shoes is inversely proportional to the amount of money that I paid for it. So I don't want to wear my expensive shoes that I paid a lot of money for and that look very nice and have fine leather, and then something might happen to them. I don't want that to happen. So I will not wear them when it's raining outside because the rain will cause stains from the dirt in the streets and the leather will get sturdy and wrinkled, and it rains a lot in Belgium, so it's a real problem. So I decided to tackle that problem, and I, could nanotechnology solve this? Of course it could, because the actual problem is that the leather absorbs the water. The water likes the leather better than it likes the air. The problem would be solved if there was just a single drop on it rolling off. Can I do this? Yes, because the basic principle is that the water likes the leather better than the air. So if I surround that water by as much air as possible, it will simply roll off. How can I do that? 
by placing little pillars all over the surface. And with little, I mean very tiny, nanoscale. You don't feel them, you don't see them. That way, the drop is surrounded more by air than by the leather, and it will simply roll off. I did not invent this. It's called the Lotus Effect. It's a known principle in, in physics, science. And it's, called, it's named after the lotus flower, who's known to stay immaculately clean in even the dirtiest pools, because it does exactly this. Take a lotus leaf, put it under the microscope, and you will see all these little pillars on top. So we're actually mimicking nature by integrating nanotechnology in shoes. And there are so many more opportunities to enhance the quality of our shoes. A year ago, I would never have thought to be integrating high tech in high heels. And to a large extent, it's the journey that I've been through from a shoe obsessed child to a PhD researcher and everything in between that made me come to this point. But it also made me realize that it's not because two things like shoes and nanotechnology have nothing in common and are very far apart that they don't make sense together. But I always loved both shoes and nanotechnology, but to me, the most exciting part was throwing them together and discover how much more interesting they become combined. Thank you.